wait till you see this. It's fantastic. Unbelievable. See what? It's a Stephen Hawking lecture from MIT in 1974. Uh, this isn't a good time. It's before he became a creepy computer boy. <laughs> That's great. You guys have to go. Why? It's just not a good time. Leonard has a lady over. Yeah, right. Your grandmother back in town? <laughs> No, and she's not a lady. She's just a new neighbor. Hang on, there really is a lady here? Uh-huh. And you want us out because you're anticipating coitus? <laughs> I'm not anticipating coitus. So she's available for coitus? Can we please just stop saying coitus? Technically, that would be coitus interruptus. <laughs> hey, is there a trick to getting it to switch from tub to shower? Oh, hi, sorry. Hello. <laughs> Enchanté, mademoiselle. <laughs> Howard Wallowitz, Caltech Department of Applied Physics. You may be familiar with some of my work. It's currently orbiting Jupiter's largest moon, taking high-resolution digital photographs. Penny, I work at the Cheesecake Factory. Come on, I'll show you the trick with the shower. Okay. Bon douche. Uh, I'm, s I'm sorry? It's French for a good shower. It's a sentiment I can express in six languages. Save it for your blog, Howard. So, you guys work with Leonard and Sheldon at the university? <laughs> I, I'm sorry, do you speak English? Oh, he speaks English, he just can't speak to women. <laughs> really? Why? He's kind of a nerd. <laughs> Juice box? <laughs> I'll do the talking. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Leonard. This is Sheldon. Hello. What did I just... Uh, we're here to pick up Penny's TV. Get lost. Okay, thanks for your time. D we're not gonna give, give up Leonard. just like that? Leonard, the TV's in the building. We've been denied access to the building, ergo we are done. Excuse me. If I were to give up at the first little hitch, I never would have been able to identify the fingerprints of string theory in the aftermath of the Big Bang. My apologies. What's your plan? <laughs> it's just a privilege to watch your mind at work. Come on, we have a combined IQ of 360. We should be able to figure out how to get into a stupid building. What do you think their combined IQ is? Just grab the door! <laughs> this is it. I'll do the talking. Good thinking. I'll just be the muscle. <laughs> yeah? I'm Leonard. This is Sheldon. From the intercom. How the hell did you get in the building? Oh. Uh, we're scientists. <laughs> Tell him about our IQ. <laughs> if you were a robot and I knew and you didn't, <laughs> would you want me to tell you? <laughs> that depends. When I learn that I'm a robot, will I be able to handle it? Maybe, although the history of science fiction is not on your side. Okay. Uh, let me ask you this. When I learn that I'm a robot, would I be bound by Asimov's three laws of robotics? You might be bound by them right now. That's true. Have you ever harmed a human being or through inaction allowed a human being to come to harm? Of course not. Have you ever harmed yourself or allowed yourself to be harmed except in cases where a human being would have been endangered? Well, no. I smell a robot. <laughs> oh, hey, Leonard. Good afternoon, Penny. So, hi, hey. Uh, I was wondering if you had plans for dinner. Uh, you mean dinner tonight? There is an inherent ambiguity in the word dinner. Uh, Technically, it refers to the largest meal of the day whenever it's consumed. So to clarify here, by dinner, I mean supper. Supper? Or dinner. <laughs> no. 
I was thinking 6.30, if you can go, or a different time. Uh, 6.30's great. Really? <laughs> great. Yeah, I like hanging out with you guys. Us guys? You know, Sheldon, Howard, Raj, who else coming? They might all be there. <laughs> or a subset of them might be there. I mean, algebraically speaking, there are too many unknowns. For example, Sheldon had Quiznos for lunch. Sometimes he finds that filling, other times he doesn't. It's no fault of Quiznos, they have a varied menu. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever, it sounds like fun. Great. Did we say a time? 6.30. And that's still good for you? It's fine. Because it's not carved in stone. No, 6.30 is great. I'll get my chisel. <laughs> <laughs> Carve the... Okay, I'll see you at 6.30. How do I look? Could you be more specific? Can you tell I'm perspiring a little? No. The... Dark crescent shaped patterns under your arms conceal it nicely. <laughs> what time is your date? 6 30. Perfect. That gives you two hours. Hey, I just ran into Penny. She seemed upset about something. I think it's her time of the month. <laughs> I marked the calendar for future reference. What's with the fish? It's an experiment. What happened to your scrambled egg research? Oh, that was a dead end. No, scrambled eggs are as good as they're ever going to be. So, fish. I read an article about Japanese scientists who inserted DNA from luminous jellyfish into other animals, and I thought, hey, fish night lights. Fish night lights. It's a billion dollar idea. Shh. Mum's the word. Sheldon, are you sure you don't want to just apologize to Gablehauser and get your job back? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I have too much to do. Like luminous fish. Shh. I'm sorry. I didn't... That's just the beginning. I also have an idea for a bulk mail-order feminine hygiene company. Oh, glow-in-the-dark tampons. <laughs> Leonard, we're going to be rich. <laughs> Every Saturday since we've lived in this apartment, I have awakened at 6.15, poured myself a bowl of cereal, added a quarter cup of 2% milk, sat on this end of this couch, turned on BBC America, and watched Doctor Who. And he's still sleeping. Every Saturday since we've lived in this apartment, I have awakened at 6.15, poured myself a bowl of cereal... I know, I know. Look, you have a TV in your room. Why don't you just have breakfast in bed? Because I'm neither an invalid nor a woman celebrating Mother's Day. <laughs> What time is it? Uh, almost 6.30. I slept all day? Oh, no, it's 6.30 in the morning. What the hell is your problem? Okay, this cereal has lost all its molecular integrity. I now have a bowl of shredded wheat paste. Okay, here you go, Leonard. One tequila sunrise. Thank you. You know, this drink is a wonderful example of how liquids with different specific gravities interact in a cylindrical container. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Raj, what'll it be? Whatever you recommend. Uh, how about a grasshopper? I make a mean grasshopper. Okay, good, coming up. Sheldon, what are you gonna have? I'll have a Diet Coke. Okay, can you please order a cocktail? I need to practice mixing drinks. Fine, I'll have a Virgin Cuba Libre. That's um, rum and Coke without the rum. Yes. So, Coke. Yes. And would you make it diet? All 
There's a can in the fridge. Uh, Cuba Libre traditionally comes in a tall glass with a lime wedge. Then swim to Cuba. <laughs> Bartenders are supposed to have people skills. Okay. Raj, here you go. All right, who's next? I'd like to try a uh, slippery nipple. <laughs> okay, you're cut off. <laughs> Anybody need a refill? Where did my life go, Penny? <laughs> One day I'm a carefree bachelor, and the next I'm married and driving a minivan to peewee cricket matches in suburban New Delhi. Are you talking to me? Is there another Penny here? <laughs> I had such plans. I had dreams. I was going to be the Indira Gandhi of particle astrophysics. But with a penis, of course. <laughs> it's amazing. Ever since I was a little boy, my father wanted me to be a gynecologist like him. How can I be a gynecologist? I can barely look a woman in the eye. <laughs> Hey, I'm leaving for the conference. Have fun presenting my lucky hunch. So I didn't mean it like that. Then why did you say it? I don't know. I wasn't. Were you trying my... to impress Penny? No, no, not at all. A little bit. <laughs> How'd that work out for you? Leonard, ready to go? Libido one, truth zero. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna ask you one more time. We did the work together. Let's present the paper together. And I'm telling you, for the last time, it's pandering. It's undignified and bite me. <laughs> Let's go. Bye, Sheldon. Goodbye, Penny. <laughs> One of these days. <laughs> Penny. 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 Good morning. Do you have any idea what time it is? Of course I do. My watch is linked to the atomic clock in Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> it's accurate to one-tenth of a second. But as I'm saying this, it occurs to me that once again, your question may have been rhetorical. What do you want? Remember how Leonard told you we couldn't come to your performance because we were attending a symposium on molecular positronium? I remember symposium. Yes, well, he lied. Wait, what? He lied, and I'm feeling very uncomfortable about it. Well, imagine how I'm feeling. Hungry? <laughs> Tired? I'm sorry, this really isn't my strong suit. <laughs> no, just crazy. Sheldon, what are you doing here? I'm sick. Thank you very much. How could you have gotten it from me? I'm not sick. You're a carrier. All these people here are doomed. You're doomed! Shh. Sheldon, what do you want? I want soup. Why didn't you just... Why didn't you just have soup at home? Penny, I have an IQ of 187. Don't you imagine that if there were a way for me to have had soup at home, I would have thought of it? You can have soup delivered. I did not think of that. <laughs> Clearly febrile delirium is setting in. Please bring me some soup while I still understand what a spoon is for. Okay, what kind of soup do you want? Well, my mother used to make me this split pea with little frankfurter slices and these homemade croutons. We have chicken tortilla and potato leek. Could I get any of those with little frankfurter slices and homemade croutons? No. Then surprise me. Would you call that moss green or forest green? Is he here? If he were, I wouldn't be. You know what he did? He watched me work for 10 minutes and then started to design a simple piece of software that could replace me. Is that even possible? 
As it turns out, yes. <laughs> Something's got to be done about him, Leonard. Like what? He'll never be able to cope with the fact that some 15-year-old kid is smarter and more accomplished than he is. Well, what if something would have happened to this boy so he was no longer a threat to Sheldon? <laughs> then our problem would be solved. <laughs> uh, hang on, are we talking about murdering Dennis Kim? Not saying no. You don't have to go that far. There are other means available. We can't send him back to North Korea. He knows how to get out. <laughs> the only thing we need to do is make this Kim kid lose his focus. It won't happen. He's not interested in anything but physics. What about biology? What? You know, biology. <laughs> The one thing that can completely derail a world-class mind. Howard, he's 15. Yeah, so when I was 15, I met Denise Paul Mary, and my grade point average fell from a 5.0 to a 1.8. <laughs> she was sleeping with you? No, I just wasted a lot of time thinking about what it would be like if she did. <laughs> Oh, good, you're all here. Look, I've decided that if the three of you drop whatever it is you're working on and join me, we could lick cold fusion in less than a decade, 12 years tops. Go away? Hmm. Could it be me? <laughs> Leonard, excellent. I want to show you something. Can it wait? I need to talk to you. Just look. I've designed the perfect uniforms for our team. The colors are based on Star Trek, the original series. The three of you will wear support red, and I will wear command gold. Why do they say AA? Army ants. Isn't that confusing? AA might mean something else to certain people. Why would a physics bowl team be called anodized aluminum? <laughs> no, I meant... Never mind. Check it out. I got you a Batman cookie jar. Oh, neat. What's the occasion? Well, you're a friend, and you like Batman and cookies, and you're off the team. <laughs> what? Howard, Raj, and I just had a team meeting. No, you didn't. Yes, we did. I just came from there. Okay, I don't know where you just came from, but it couldn't have been a team meeting because I'm on the team and I wasn't there. Ergo, the team did not meet. Okay, uh, let me try it this way. Uh, I was at a coffee clatch with a couple of friends and one thing led to another and it turns out you're off the team. Why? Because you're taking all the fun out of it. Well, I'm sorry, is the winner of the physics bowl the team that has the most fun? Okay, let me try it this way. You're annoying and no one wants to play with you anymore. <laughs> I see. Well, at this point I should inform you that I intend to form my own team and destroy the molecular bonds that bind your very matter together and reduce the resulting particulate chaos to tears. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. You're welcome. One more thing. Yes? It's on, bitch. <laughs> I'm gonna give birth to my colon. Oh, hey, guys. Oh, hi, Penny. <laughs> Take a break, guys. What are you doing? Oh, you know, just moving a time machine. Yeah, okay, neat, but I really gotta get to work, so... No problem. Hang on. But what about your time machine? Some things are more important than toys. <laughs> oh, I'm scared. Don't worry, baby, I've got you. Leonard. <laughs> it's still my turn. Anyway, we're eight years old, and Sheldon converts my Easy Bake Oven to some kind of high-powered furnace. <laughs> just, just classic. I needed a place to fire ceramic semiconductor substrates for homemade integrated circuits. 
He was trying to build some sort of arm robot to keep me out of his room. Made necessary by her insistence on going into my room. Anyway, I go to make those little corn muffins they give you. There's a big flash. Next thing you know, my eyebrows are gone. Oh. <laughs> Not your eyebrows? Yep. I had to go through the entire second grade with crooked eyebrows my mom drew on. Oh. Is that what that was? I just assumed that the second grade curriculum had rendered you quizzical. Hey, Leonard, you left your underwear in the dryer downstairs. <laughs> Those are not mine. Really? They have your little name label in them. <laughs> yeah, no, I do. I, I use those uh, just to polish up my spear fishing equipment. <laughs> I spear fish. <laughs> when I'm not crossbow hunting, I spear fish. <laughs> Uh, uh, Penny, this is Sheldon's twin sister, Missy. Missy, this is our neighbor, Penny. Hi. Wow, you don't look that much alike. Can I get a hallelujah? <laughs> Fraternal twins come from two separate eggs. They are no more alike than any other siblings. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, guess what? I've been accepted as a test subject for a new miracle drug to overcome pathological shyness. Oh, good for you, Raj. Yes, I'm very hopeful. Hello, Missy. They mentioned there may be side effects. <laughs> so, Missy, have you ever met a man from the exotic subcontinent of India? Well, there's Dr. Patel at our church. Ah, yes, Patel, good man. Do you like motorcycles? Because I ride a hog. A hog? You have a two-cylinder scooter with a basket in the front. You still have to wear a helmet. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the Kama Sutra? The sex book. The Indian sex book. In other words, if you wonder, wonder who wrote the book of love, it was us. Penny, listen, I've got a problem. Yeah, well, so do I. Look, you gotta stall Leonard a little longer. I don't think I can. You have to. We all have to be there at the same time to yell surprise. Okay, you have to understand something. We're in a hospital right now. Why? Is Leonard okay? Leonard's fine. I'm fine. Thanks for asking, by the way. <laughs> Okay, I don't need your attitude. Listen, just hold him there a little longer. Look, I've done my best, but he wants to go home and I don't know how to stop him. <sighs> okay, how about this? You keep him there a little longer and when you get to the party, I'll point out which of my friends are easy. <laughs> don't toy with me, woman. <laughs> I got a hot former fat girl with no self-esteem. I got a girl who punishes her father by sleeping around and an alcoholic who's two tequila shots away from letting you wear her like a hat. Thy will be done. <laughs> I'm doing this for you, little buddy. Thank you. You look very nice. Thank you. So do you. <laughs> <laughs> I made an eight o'clock reservation. Okay, yeah, great. Listen, um, maybe we should talk first. Oh. Okay. But before you say anything, have you ever heard of Schrodinger's cat? <laughs> Actually, I've heard far too much about Schrodinger's cat. Good. All right, the cat's alive. Let's go to dinner. BT Zainar. BT. BT Ho. Crazy man. Call the police. You know, booby die get to Shuguan. BT Zainar. Man yot's a watch wong shong. I'm dog, dog, man yot. 
Eier. 